Oh, it's recording. <laughs> One and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time for Bargain Bag, my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags, seven CDs each, from the late Skips Records and CD World. Uh, lots of fun to be had always in every bargain bag, so that's why I'm so sad that to see that the feature will be ending at the end of this year. Uh, be between opening the two bags right here on camera, uh, before your very eyes, uh, I talk about a CD, or possibly more than one CD, spoiler alert, that I have found or that you might be likely to find in the bargain section of a retailer near you, whoever happens to sell music that you like to stroll and shop at, a thrift store, music store, wherever. Uh, but before I get to any of that, I break down what I found in last month's pair of bargain bags. Uh, and you never know what you're going to find in these bags, as from in rough order from cast-offs to keepers, and there are a couple of keepers, as there usually are. Let's talk about what I found in last month's bags. Now, full disclosure, these first two CDs I did not listen to, but for very different reasons. Uh, the first one, as you might know if you've been a uh, watcher of mine for a while, and particularly a bargain bag watcher, you know that when I get holiday CDs in the bargain bags, I save them until... Uh, the holiday season. Basically, after uh, Thanksgiving is when I like to start listening to Christmas music. So I just put these aside and wait until then to listen to them, and I will let you know what I think of the CD uh, in probably in one of my holiday videos in December. But yes, Etta James, 12 Songs of Christmas. I adore Etta James, uh, her, her song At Last, and I actually have the album At Last that that song was on. It's a wonderful, wonderful album, one of the must-haves in the world of soul music, classic soul music from the 60s. But yes, a fantastic artist, so I am sure that I will be not be disappointed when I get around to listening to this one at the end of November. So yes. Uh, the other one I have not listened to and, and won't listen to is a karaoke CD. It's one of the MTV-sponsored uh, karaoke albums. I've never been a karaoke participant. I've never been a karaoke fan or listener. So this just kind of did not have any sort of uh, meaning to me. I just didn't, I didn't want to waste my time on it. And then uh, this next one I am casting off only because, well, first of all, it's a little bit scratched up. Uh, it is uh, The Best of Bonnie Raitt, her uh, 90s albums from her Capitol discography. Uh, but the other reason is because all of her the songs on this album that I really care about, I actually have on the two studio albums that they were on. So, yes, uh, yeah, that's, that's the reason why it's, uh, I'm casting this one off. Uh, this next one is a group called Wumpscut, and uh, it's, the album's called Born Again. Industrial stuff and uh, it's, it's more along the EDM or electronica side of industrial rather than the industrial rock side of industrial but uh, yeah it's just it's a little bit too monotonous for me and it's full of uh, lots of remixes or at least uh, oh uh, remixes and previously unreleased stuff and then we have Boilermaker with their album Watercourse uh, hard rock mixed with some jazz a little bit of jazz uh, but I just did not find the vocalist appealing at all. His voice was actually kind of boring to me. So that really kind of dragged down the songs for me. I just did not care for this one. And uh, the next one up here is The Mojo Gurus with their album Gone. Kind of like barroom rock, you know, straight ahead rock with some, a little bit of country and a little bit of blues mixed in with it. That's basically the sound that uh, they had going for them there. But the problem with this one though is that the lyrics were rather um, pedestrian, rather, they just seemed unimaginative to me. So that's why I just I just did not find a whole lot to enjoy out of this album, unfortunately. And then we have a group of uh, four women, an, an all-female group here called Motherload, and this is their album Heartline. Uh, not bad, it's uh, pop rock, a little bit on the folk side. Like I said before, I listen to so many CDs, especially with these bargain bag uh, videos, that something really has to stand out in order for me to really appreciate it. Uh, this next one was, it was pretty good, but not good enough for me to keep just because I'm not really much into show tunes. Uh, Michael Crawford, uh, Songs from the Stage and Screen. Uh, very, very good stuff. He's, he's a good vocalist, although there's something about his voice that I don't really, really care for. And I'm not sure what it is. He sings in a bit of a higher register than probably than I care for. Not weirdly high. That's one of the reasons why I question why am I not more into Michael Crawford. I don't know, but uh, he is accompanied, though, by the London Symphony Orchestra, which is outstanding on this album. So, I don't know, I might give this one one more listen. 
And then the next one here we have uh, the Taylor Eigsty Trio with their album Resonance. Uh, jazz, kind of a, basically a small jazz combo kind of thing. Uh, not bad at all. In fact, some of them playing is just furiously fast on here. And I, I don't think they missed a note. I mean, that, that's, that's just, that's how talented the musicians are on this. It's just, the stuff just didn't really appeal to me. Uh, s small combo jazz has to be really, really good. Or it has to strike me in some way for me to really like it. But, oh, one interesting thing, uh, commonality between this album and the Michael Crawford album. Both of them have the song Somewhere from West Side Story by Leonard Bernstein. Uh, so that, that was kind of an inter interesting thing. And I listened to them one after the other. I think I listened to Michael Crawford first and then then this one. And track two came along and said, oh, that sounds familiar. Uh, same song, just done in a different, different style. But uh, yeah, uh, very decently talented. Very, very talented, actually. Just not quite my thing. And then we have Abaka The uh, Yes, I had fun saying that... Uh, band name in the last video, as you, as you recall. Bakadoobie, Bakadoobie, Bakadoobie. A very musical name. This is a blend of jazz and world music and reggae and soul and all those those kinds of stuff and, and the adjacent genres to that. Uh, good stuff, but not quite up my alley, gotta say. Sad to say, actually. I, 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 I kind of wanted to like that one more. Uh, kind of like the Michael Crawford. but uh. And then this one is a German rock band called H Blocks with their album Fly Eyes, and this is their third album, I believe it was, when I looked it up on Wikipedia. Uh, hard rock, and it was kind of, uh, I kind of anticipated it was going to be hard rock because one of the pictures on the back of the band made them kind of look like uh, Sugar Ray or the, those kind of guys, but uh, yeah, I might listen to this one one more time just to see if uh, it, anything persuades me to keep it. Uh, the, some of the songs were fairly uh, catchy, as I recall, so. Then we have a... Uh, a uh, smooth jazz slash new age artist called Dagobert Bohm, and this is his album Morning Flight. And this this was not bad. It, it kind of reminded me of some of the smooth jazz and new age stuff that I got into way back in the beginning of my um, the first time I really got into music was uh, was with those genres. So uh, yeah, not bad. I, I think I'm going to keep this one and at least listen to it once or twice more. But these last two are actually um, are, are the two definite keepers in here. And one of them was a surprise, but the other one was not quite a surprise. I kind of had a feeling I was going to like Michael Penn. And because I, I know I've seen one of his CDs, and I'm sure it was at Skips, and it was... Those of you who frequent record stores, you go into a store often enough, and you see this one CD that's, like, always been there, you know? And it was and it was obviously it was in the front of the racks because I could look at the, uh, the, at the cover art as I was going by. And I'm pretty sure that was a Michael Penn CD, but it wasn't this one. So I'm kind of looking... I'm going to keep my eyes open for whatever that other CD was, uh, because I, I liked this Michael Penn CD. Uh, pop rock with just a little bit of folk in it, and again, uh, kind of like uh, H-Blocks. Uh, ki kind of catchy stuff, as I recall. So yeah, not bad at all. I'm going to keep that one and give it a little bit more time, and uh, probably search for more Michael Penn as, uh, as I had the opportunities. But this one surprised me, and I did not think I was going to like this, these guys at all. It is a group called Nine Electric. And this is their album, The Damaged Ones. I think this was their debut album. Uh, but yes, it is um, metal and kind of like borders between metal and an industrial rock kind of stuff. But uh, the songs are surprisingly earwormy. They're, they're more catchy than they should be and for coming from this kind of genre. So, uh, but yeah, and, and the vocalist does scream. You know, and, and I've mentioned before how I do not like when a vocalist crosses the line between singing and screaming or yelling they lose me but this guy he screams but he screams in tune he sings screams i guess that's what you'd say he does so uh yeah i'm definitely going to be uh listening to this one a few more times oh and another cool thing about this one is a little souvenir that i don't think was intentionally left in here but it is the slip it's um when the listening stations at skips had the cds in them they would always have this little info slip that they would cut out and put into the plastic pocket in the the placeholder where the CD is, is in the machine and talks about the band and in the context of this album and, you know, kind of like a little press release, basically. And so this was actually tucked inside the uh, liner notes. So kind of a cool little uh, keepsake from Skips that I, I will keep and treasure along with the CD because it was pretty darn good. So now let's get to the part that I've been waiting for and that uh, probably some of you have been waiting for as well. My favorite part of the videos is where I get to tear into the bags and see what's inside them. 
scissors are a good thing. As long as your finger is not between the blades. Right, uh, let's see a little peekaboo at the CDs. You guys get to see them before I do. And so let's see, what is in here? CD number one. Hmm. Cerrito. They know you're gone. I have never heard of this person before. From the Chaco Records label out of Nashville, Tennessee. Being a Nashville label, I'm going to assume it's country, but that's a pretty flimsy assumption. So, oh, George Winston. Uh, this guy is an instrumental artist. He's on the Wyndham Hill label. He's put out a lot of albums. And uh, actually, there is a series of albums that were, you know, four albums, uh, the, the seasonal series, I guess you'd call them, Summer, Winter, Fall, and Spring. So this is the summer installment. So yeah, looking forward to listening to this one. Uh, not sure if it'll be... Uh, a keeper or not, since I have absolutely no idea until I listen to these things if they're going to be keepers or not. Then we have Strunz and Farah. Oh, I've heard of these two. I've heard of this pair. I don't know what kind of music they do, but uh, it looks like uh, it's going to be world music, possibly. Looking forward to uh, Mosaico is the name of the album. Then we have, oh, Simple Minds, uh, their album Real Life. I have I have never owned any Simple Minds albums before, so yes, I will be very interested to listen to this one. Uh, obviously, the only song that I know of theirs is the big one that was in, I think it was in a John Hughes movie. Uh, I, I usually get uh, uh, filming amnesia. I can remember something, but when the camera's running, my mind's a blank. More so than usual. Anyway, uh, oh, we have Desri with her album Super Supernatural. Uh, she did the song You Gotta Be, which was a big, big R&B hit. So this is, um, I do not see that one on this album. So this is a, a subsequent album, I, I would assume, unless it's a pre predecessor album. So yeah, definitely looking forward to listening to this one, because that's I, I love that song. That was like a classic R&B song from the 90s, I think. And we have, oh, D-A-R-K, I guess is the name of the band. 2016 Jazz Stone Limited. Is this a jazz album? Jazz rock, possibly? I have never heard of these guys, and it is still sealed. I just got the spine label on it, so that'll be interesting to listen to. And then we have, oh, last album in this bag. It hit the viewfinder, sorry. We have Lazu, is the name of the artist. Zooforia is the name of the album, so have no idea what these guys do, but I will be interested to hear what it is. Okay, now let's move right along and talk about my Spotlight CDs that I have for this month's Bargain Bag video. Yes, I have two CDs for you today. Um, yeah, I did a Bargain Bag video, I think it was last year, where I talked about two CDs. Uh, in quest uh, that, that video in question was the first two CDs in the Ally McBeal TV soundtrack uh, collection. And uh, again, these two CDs are very, very closely closely related. Uh, they're, one of them is a sequel CD to the other one. It is Motown and Motown 2 by Michael McDonald. Yes, the uh, I've talked before about my love for the Motown genre. Uh, I mean, honestly, let's face it, it's a genre all its own. And yes, whenever I'm in a bad mood, a downer mood, uh, and I can put on a Motown collection, which I have several of, and they inevitably lift my spirits. So yes, I have several... Uh, compilations, as well as some Motown tribute albums by a few different artists, including Michael McDonald. And hey, when you put Motown songs together with Michael McDonald's inimitable, amazingly talented voice, it's a recipe for success, honestly. But yes, these are these are both just fantastic albums. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to have to say about them, so these this uh, uh, Spotlight CD segment might be a little short, but uh, I heard it through the grapevine. Uh, he does a couple of uh, Stevie Wonder songs on this on Volume One alone, just uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm yours, and I believe when I fall in love, it will, it will be forever. He does fantastic jobs on those songs, on all the songs, really. Let's face it, he does fantastically on these songs. Uh, How sweet it is to be loved by you. That's just wonderful. And Ain't No Mountain High Enough, which was Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, I believe. And uh, let's see what else. I'm gonna make you love me. Then that was, I believe, the Jackson Five. Uh, so, and he actually does, he throws a little curveball by including some lesser known songs, at least songs that I don't, don't recognize the, ti the titles of in these albums. And uh, yeah, and, and yeah, a couple of the, the songs themselves were not familiar with uh, to me at all. 
And uh, on volume two, he does a, a few more of the more uh, downbeat songs, uh, in a way kind of following the the maturing sound of Motown from volume one, which was the more straight ahead, more pop type of soul stuff, into volume two, which was a little bit more on the moodier side, the more uh, advanced Motown, later Motown releases like uh, uh, Marvin Gaye, he does Mercy, Mercy Me, as well as, oh, he does another one I thought, uh, What's Going On, that is the Marvin Gaye, the Marvin Gaye signature song. And, uh, he, but he also does some of the classics, uh, Reach Out, I'll Be There, and Baby, I Need Your Lovin', and so and Tracks of My Tears, and Second That Emotion. Just a non-stop uh, great list of songs on both of these albums. If you've got one, you've got to get the other one. Honestly, it's, um, yeah, just, I, I don't know what else I can say to talk these albums up uh, any more than I possibly could, but yes. I know, I know some people might not be crazy about Michael McDonald's voice, some people might argue that he puts a little bit too much of an affectation on his voice, but I don't think he does, really. And certainly not on these albums. He, he, he's Michael McDonald. I mean, come on. You could pick a, f a lot of far worse vocalists, far worse vocalists than Michael McDonald to do uh, Motown albums. And yeah, these, these are just wonderful. What can I say? They're, just, they're, they're classics, and uh, yeah, I've had them in my library for years and years, and they're not going anywhere. And now for the final segment in today's video, the second of two mystery scene grab bags. Let's get to grabbing, shall we? Off with its head. I try to make these videos as entertaining as possible, and sometimes I fail miserably. Anyway, uh, take a look peekaboo at the CDs themselves. And as I take a look and see what's in here, what do we have? Chris Rice, Deep Enough to Dance. Oh, no, Deep Enough to Dream, sorry. Uh, where have I heard of this guy before? Or maybe I haven't heard of him before and I'm imagining things, uh, but yeah. Not sure what to expect on that one, so I will be uh, very pleased to listen to it. Then we have, oh, the Pernice Brothers. I, I think it's Pernice, or is it Pernice? Pernice Brothers, I think. I've heard of these guys, but I've never checked them, them out, so. I don't know what to say about some of these because I've never listened to them. And we have the Franz family, or Franz family. I don't know who these guys are. Oh, this looks like it maybe. Yes, it's going to be a religious um, worship CD. So yes, uh, let me tell you about Jesus. Uh, I saw the miracle. God moves in a windstorm. And oh, <laughs> in the palm of your hand. For a minute, I thought that was. I thought that said in the psalm of your hand. I appreciate a good pun, and why not Christian puns, right? Uh, the Lord's Supper, so yeah. Very much of a worship CD, so I will probably not listen to that one at all. Maybe I'll go ahead and listen to it, I don't know. You know me in Christian music, or in case you don't, I'm not a fan of Christian music. Then we have Lisa Serbone. I've not heard of her, she's not familiar to me. So, uh, yeah. Close Your Eyes is the name of it. Oh, a radio station scrawled their call letters right on the um, uh, front of the cover art booklet, so thank you. Minor complete. And then we have, oh, another Desri. And this is the one that has You Gotta Be. Cool. Two different Desri albums in consecutive bargain bags. I, I'm okay with this. So yes, and that is the only Desri song I've heard, is You Gotta Be. So I am absolutely thrilled to get a good double dose of Desri to see how... Double dose of Desri to see how I like her. So, yeah. And then we have a group called Pastiche with the album Remember That. I'm, I have nothing to say about this group because I have never heard of them before, so they will be interesting to listen to. And then. <sighs> Sorry. Hope I didn't uh, break the lens there. I uh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, and then, oh! This one was in a previous bar bargain bag, Julia Darling. Not Julia Darling, but Julia Darling. Yeah. I, I'm sure she's darling to somebody, just not to me. Uh, yes, this was, as I recall, just it was not mem memorable. I didn't keep the CD when it came around the first time, so I don't know. And it was not very long ago that I got this one in the in the previous bargain bag, so I might just bypass this one as well. So, uh, well. There you have it for these uh, next two bargain bags. Lots of interesting, fun stuff.
And so that'll do it once again for Bargain Bag for the month of May 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.